Up and down the west side of Lower Michigan, small armies of natural resource professionals are tromping through deep snow and scouring the woods, searching for killers, infestations of tiny aphid-like insects that suck the life out of eastern hemlock trees, the hemlock woolly adelgid, or HWA. Hemlock woolly adelgid is a small aphid-like insect uh, that is obligate to hemlock trees, specifically eastern hemlock, and it feeds on those trees uh, by extending like a proboscis type device into the veins of the tree, pulling the nutrients out of the tree, which over a period of time leads to tree mortality. Sean Howard is a project manager for the Nature Conservancy, working with a statewide effort to stop and kill this invasive insect. The primary sign of infestation from hemlock woolly adelgid is a white woolly mass at the base of the needles uh, that we refer to as an ovisac. And the ovisac is actually waste produced by the adelgid that then also serves to protect it over the winter. Those ovisacs are most visible during the winter and therefore that's the primary time to survey for this pest. A non-native pest imported from Asia decades ago, HWA has attacked and killed whole forests in Appalachia. Experts believe the insect was first imported into Michigan with infested nursery stock in 2006. Though the first small infestations were eradicated, HWA has now invaded the forests of West Michigan, including popular state parks. P.J. Hoffmaster was the first detection of hemlock woolly adelgid on Michigan state managed land in January of 2017, and that really set off a, a pretty massive effort to search state parks and other state lands to find out really how far uh, hemlock woolly adelgid has spread and how big of an issue we were dealing with here. Michigan DNR forester and natural resources steward Heidi Fry says the state is in a high stakes battle with HWA. The loss of hemlocks in the state has the potential to be ecologically devastating, um, particularly um, on this side of the state on the west coast, but hemlocks are really important species ecologically. Um, I often say in Michigan uh, we don't have a lot of hemlocks and the number get, that gets thrown around is about 170 million trees in the state. Uh, when you compare that to other species, that's really not a lot. but we don't have a lot of it, but where we do have it is important. So places like uh, streams, stream corridors, riverbanks, um, here in the coastal dune system, we have dunes that are, you can find entire faces that are just hemlock. So losing hemlock in a system like that will result in things like erosion and loss of scenic view sheds. It'll have um, impacts on certain species that do rely on hemlock. Um, along streams, it can have um, a dramatic impact on stream temperatures and that can affect fish species. So losing hemlock really would be devastating, not just to Michigan State Parks and our efforts to protect habitat here, but also for anglers, for people that enjoy the outdoors, for the local economy. Um, it really is an important tree, um, even though we don't have a lot of it statewide. So for us, um, surveying and treating hemlocks uh, to prevent the spread um, and to protect trees is really critical. Uh, we have a team of uh, right now five uh, staff through the Michigan Civilian Conservation Corps that is surveying for hemlock woolly adelgid, uh, mapping it. Uh, everyone's got iPads, they're out there systematically looking at every acre uh, at this park and other state parks that are at high risk. With state funding support, the Northwest Michigan Invasive Species Network has joined the search for HWA in forests outside of state parks across Benzie, Grand Traverse, Leelanau, and Manistee counties. Here's ISN coordinator Katie Grisiak. So ISN's HWA team is headed out every day to different parcels in northern Michigan, whether that's Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore or somebody's backyard. Um, and they're looking at these trees for the signs of HWA. They're looking for those little ova sacs, those white fuzzy things. Um, and they're also looking for just signs of declining health, trying to pinpoint where this could be. Um, we're using a lot of prioritization. We know we can't hit every single tree in the entire four county area. So we're focused on um, areas that are nearer to the lake. We think that those are areas that are high likelihood to have hemlock woolly adelgid. Um, we're looking at areas that have lots of hemlocks or if we don't know where the hemlocks are, where we think there could be lots of hemlocks. And we have some great modeling to follow. Um, and then moving through those properties and um, checking the right number of trees to have a good sample of 
how many we can, and then returning to sites if we think we can hit them harder. And aside from the HWA team heading out, we're actually trying to empower our partners as well, um, bringing in as many of them as we can uh, to train them about how, what to look for um, and how to look for it so that they can, any of those properties that we can't hit or that we aren't able to hit as heavily as we want, um, they can send folks out and look for it. They can be monitoring their trees as well. Recognizing this problem uh, can be hard because it's not something that's impacting everyone right away. Um, and it, what it is, it's a slow death for hemlock. So as those adelgids, they attach and they feed, um, they're very slowly killing the tree by stealing its nutrients and stealing its energy. So folks can go out and look for hemlock woolly adelgid on their own. It's really important to get as many eyes out there as possible um, and to report it. Um, when that's reported, it can um, be reported through MISIN, the Midwest Invasive, Invasive Species Information Network, um, or through the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. They don't fly. In fact, when they spread, they spread by something called crawlers. Um, most of the time they don't move, but in the crawler stage, they literally do just crawl all around. And so that's why it's so crucial to deal with brushing off and, and cleaning your gear, because they are just these itty bitty, teeny tiny little, little bugs um, that crawl around. So they aren't going to fly anywhere unless they get on a bird, which is possible, but we think that humans are a much bigger um, vector for these guys. According to these experts, the spread of HWA and its impact can be contained if we all work together. The goal is to stop the spread of hemlock woolly adelgid. Um, we have some, some really good tools uh, that we can use to slow the spread, um, doing some different chemical treatments uh, that we've been doing, but also that homeowners can do too. Um, that's our mission, is to slow the spread and to protect as much hemlock as possible. Um, unlike some other pests, um, you know, it, we talk about emerald ash borer all the time. Um, emerald ash borer really was here and undetected for such a long period of time that it really just got away from us. With hemlock woolly adelgid, you know, it has been here uh, for a few years, but we can at least visually find it in our surveys. We can go out and we can look, and we have some really um, some chemical treatments that we can utilize uh, to protect trees and slow the spread. So there are some uh, things that are working in our favor. Absolutely, I think that we can stop it uh, here in Northwest Michigan because we don't have any confirmed populations yet. Um, and because even in the whole state of Michigan, we're moving on this pretty quickly. Um, in the east, we've seen tons and tons of mortality of hemlock trees in the Appalachians, um, but that's also something that's been there for a long time. We're at that early stage that we always talk about, the winnable battles. And so um, we think that educating people about not spreading hemlock willy adelgid and looking for hemlock willy adelgid when they're on their own property or when they're on state property can make a huge difference and, and stop hemlock willy adelgid. Thank you.